Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace in our lives, for your love in our lives. Thank you for being present with us today. Lord, may your spirit again teach our hearts as we hear your word, meditate upon your word, that our walk with you may grow stronger every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is Valentine's Day, and I, I, I'm going to venture to say life is better when you remember Valentine's Day for your special Valentine. Would that be a true statement? Life is a little better when you remember your Valentine? Yeah, you know, I remember as a kid in, in school, elementary school, um, always for Valentine's Day, we would have to, I say have to, we would, we would make Valentine's. And one of the Valentine's we would always make, and it seemed like mandatory, was you need to make a Valentine for your mom. And some of you may remember doing that in, in this manner. You take a piece of paper and you would fold it in half. And you would take the scissors and you would start cutting, kind of like the shape of a, like of a half of a heart. And you're going to see my inability to do crafts right here in front of everybody. And somehow, if it got cut somewhat right... You would take that and open it up and you'd have a heart. And then with that Valentine heart, you would take it and you would, you would kind of fold it over and, and on the front, put it like this, you'd like maybe write mom, you know. Then the inside, you'd write across happy Valentine's Day. And in my case, I'd always put your son, Larry, just to make sure she knew who it was coming from, okay. And... Uh, you know, so we'd have these nice little Valentines, and we'd take them home, you know, and, and, you know, how long would that take, you know? Of course, you know, with the Crayolas, you know, you would color, and you would maybe decorate a little more, but you would take that home, and, and it would be for your mom for Valentine's Day, and you give that to your mom, and, and you know what? She would just love it. And I would think, wow, what a, what a deal, you know, what a, what a great thing, and, and, and that your mom would appreciate that so much, and, and she, would, she would love that, and, and you would think about, wow, that was, that was really a good thing. And then maybe there would be some benefits from that, like maybe homemade chocolate chip cookies or other things would, would proceed, you know, on Valentine's Day, uh, maybe little chocolate hearts. By the way, I've been here for two services during that children's message. You think I got a chocolate heart? I didn't get a chocolate heart today. I'm just saying. Anyway, I told Pastor Kenny I was going to have to come sit down there and get a chocolate heart. But anyway, but you see that in this expression of love meant something, and it, and it, and it was kind of the, the, the expression of your care for your mom, and your mom would re respond, you know, in, in being thankful and in these kind of things. And I think, you know, there was a benefit to, to, you know, sharing that love with someone that you cared about. And I think that's still true. There's a benefit, not just on Valentine's Day, but other times throughout the year, to, to share that love that you have for someone. And let them know that, and to, and to be able to share that with them, it, it just means something. It's something special. And today on Valentine's Day, I think, I think we, we, we can pause and, and think that it's also special that God took time to share his love with us. And if there's a benefit to us in also calling upon the Lord because of what he's done for us and how much he loves us. And I think sometimes you hear in our world today, you know, people that are followers of Jesus, sometimes people ask and go, why do you do that? <laughs> you know, why, do you, why do you bother showing up at church on a Sunday? Why do you, why do you bother you know, reading the Bible? Why do you bother? What's the big deal? What's the benefit of that anyway? I got to thinking about that thing, and well, maybe we should review some of that today. It's a great day to do that because we're talking about love. We're talking about God's love for us and our love for God. And just what are the benefits of calling upon the name of the Lord? What are the benefits of writing, maybe making a Valentine out to God today in your heart <laughs> and saying, Lord, I'm giving this to you? Well, I'm going to talk about three different benefits today. Three benefits that I believe come from the scripture readings that we had today, and, and kind of collectively from Romans and, and from Luke 4 and from Deuteronomy, and, and kind of look at what are the benefits of calling on the Lord, of responding to him in a love, in a love manner the way he's loved up. And I think the first one I'm going to look at is, the, is maybe the biggest one, and that's from Romans 10, where it talks about one of the benefits of calling on the Lord is that you will be saved. You will be saved. Paul writes, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. 
That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. You will be saved. You know, I think, you know, as we, as we talk, talk and walk in this world, as, as the people of God, there's no greater thing than the salvation that he's, ga he's gained for us. On a day to talk about love, on a Valentine's Day, we see no greater love than this, that the, that the Lord gave up his son, Jesus Christ. And I don't know, I don't know how, you can, how you can top that one. How can you top that the very Son of God came to this earth to walk a life and live a life that we couldn't live? How do you top that the very Son of God was willing to go to a cross to die so that the sin that is in our lives, our imperfectness, would be washed clean? How do you top that as an expression of love? I don't think you can. And then when we call upon the name of the Lord, we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that He is the Son of God, and we confess that he did go to that cross for us. And, we, and when we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, again, the very heart of the message of the gospel was that Jesus was resurrected. And, and, we, and we bring that about in our hearts and in our lives, and we confess that, and we believe that, and we hold of that. We see this great benefit of salvation. And, and there is nothing greater. Safe from sin, safe from death, safe from hell, safe from all those things. Jesus paid the price. He loves us that much. So to call on the name of the Lord, first of all, is a great benefit of just being sure of the salvation that God gives us. It's, a, it's knowing that present reality of, with a future consequence. And it's knowing that right now, God loves us. He loves us. The second benefit is that in that love, in that relationship with our Lord God, he will help us stand against temptation. You know, I always get amused. Every time this, this reading comes around in the church year and, and the temptation of Jesus in Luke 4, I always get amused that the Satan would think that he could come and tempt the very Son of God to fall down and worship him. It's always amusing to me. Yeah, turn that, turn that stone into bread. Man, it's not there by bread alone, right? I'm going to show you the kings of the world. Fall down and worship me. You shall worship the Lord your God only, and him shall you serve. Jump off the pinnacle of that temple. The angels will come and help you. You know, you should not test the Lord your God. I think it's just downright. Satan thought that he could tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? If Satan would tempt the Lord Jesus, do you think he's going to tempt you? Do you think he's going to come around to you and try to make you believe that this God of love that loves you doesn't love you? Do you think he's going to come around and try to tempt you and say, oh, you don't need to confess in Jesus. You don't need to, like what is, what is Paul right here, you don't need to confess with your mouth. You don't need to believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Whatever you believe, that's all good. You know, you don't need to do this stuff. Come follow me. You don't think Satan's going to tempt you with that? You don't think sin's going to come around to you and say, oh, go and do this. After all, God forgives you. It doesn't matter what you do. You just go and do whatever you want to do. You don't think Satan's going to tempt you? Every day he is on your heels. Because nothing would please the devil more than to have you turn away from the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. But the Lord is there help you stand in time of temptation. In 1 Corinthians 10, we read these words. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. He will provide the way of escape. You know what Jesus used every time with the devil? He used God's word. You know what the Lord provides us to stand against temptation? His word. When Satan comes around tempting us, we need to know the word so we can go, Satan, I'm not falling for that trick. He provides that way for us to stand. As we're strengthened in his word, we can, we can recognize the devil's temptations. We can recognize the lies that he is telling because that's after all what the devil is. He's the father of lies. We can recognize that. And the amazing thing is that even when we fall, even when we fall to that temptation, the Lord Jesus is still there to pick us up. 
John writing in his first epistle, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. How much does God love you? Even when we fail, his love never ends. He is there to forgive us. Just like when we come before the, you know, in services with confession and absolution, that forgiveness is there for us. That's how great the Father's love is for us. And, he, and he's there to lead us and walk with us every day, walk side by side with us. He gave us life on the cross and on a daily basis. He's leading us through this life. You know, in John 10, he talks about, you know, I am the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. He's there to lead us. He writes, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's what Satan does. And Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down the life of the sheep. Who's on your side? Jesus is on your side. He's here to lead us. He's here to, he's here to lift us up when we fall. He's there to take us and carry us through this life. See, that's one of the benefits of calling on the name of the Lord. We have Jesus by our side who will, who will be with us in times of temptation, who continues to forgive us and stands us up again and, and keeps us moving forward. Then there's a third benefit of temptation, and it's the one that you'll live in his favor. You'll live in God's favor. You, you, you can love God back. That's the best way to put it. You can love God back. You think about that? You get to love God. What a privilege that is. What a, what a joy that is. I know, I know some of you here today, you know, you, you, you're here with your, your, your spouse or somebody. Maybe you're here with your special Valentine today, you know. And, and you think about that, what, a, what a privilege it is to get to love that other person. What a, what a joy that is in your heart and in your life. And I, and I think about that, I think what a joy it is that we get to love God. In, in Deuteronomy 26, Deuteronomy 26, the uh, the writer's talking about how when you come into the land the Lord's given you, he's talking about the promised land. You know, they've been led out of the, out of the, the slavery in Egypt. They've been led across the wilderness and they're, they're going to go in the land. And he'll tell them, when you get into this land and you live in it, you'll take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. You'll put it in a basket. You'll go to the place where the Lord your God will choose and to make his name dwell there. And you'll hand that, that basket over to the priest and it'll get set before the altar of the Lord. What is that doing? That's a response of love to what God has given. It's a remembering of God's blessings and saying, Lord, I have the opportunity now to give back to you because of what you've done for me. It's that benefit of saying, Lord, you've done so much for me. Allow me to, allow me to do something for you. And that's one of the benefits we have. And, and we can remember what the Lord God has done for us. That's that whole section here in Deuteronomy 26 where he talks, make a response before the Lord God. You know, a wandering Arabian was my father. We went down to Egypt and the story goes on. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with mighty, de mighty deeds and, and mighty and great wonders. And he, and he did all these things for us. And he's brought us into this place. We get to remember what God has done. I heard on the radio yesterday one of the, one of the DJs was talking about a things that people could do on Valentine's Day that maybe, you know, if you didn't have a lot of money or whatever and, and you just wanted to do something. And, and he, one of the things that there was a list of suggestions, and one of the suggestions was, you know, with your special Valentine, take out, take out old picture albums and, and just kind of go back through those picture albums and reminisce about some of those good times, some of the things that have happened in your life. And that's kind of a neat little thing maybe to do on Valentine's Day. And I was thinking about that thinking, that's what we do with our Lord God. We have a chance to, to go back and remember the blessings that the Lord God has given us. And we, and we have a chance to remi be reminded again of his great love for us in Christ and, and how he helped us through this trial or how, what joy he brought us in this moment and these things as we look back and think back of God's presence in our lives. I think what a great benefit that is. What a joy that is to, to remember God's blessings and everything that he does for us. And then we get to worship him. That's where that... Deuteronomy 26 ends up, you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. You shall rejoice in all the good that your God has given you to you, your house, the Levite, the sojourners among you. We worship the Lord our God. We have the opportunity to come before him in that manner. And that's all a benefit 
of calling on the name of the Lord. Because we recognize and know that without God's working in our hearts and lives, we would not have this great positive relationship with our God. But because of what he has done, we can love him too in very special ways. We live under God's favor in this life. He has brought us into the promised land. He has brought us into his kingdom. What a great thing that is. So somebody's asking Aaron, you know, why do you follow this God? You know, why? Why do I follow this God? Because he, because he's saved me, he's redeemed me, he helps me stand against the temptations. The devil he has brought me and kept me in his faith in life, so that I get to love him back. That's why we call him the name of the Lord. And the great thing about this is this for everybody. At the end of that Romans reading. He says, Paul writes, he says, uh, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing what? His riches. Bestowing his riches on all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The riches of heaven, those riches of heaven that Jesus gave up to come to this earth, that's what we receive. <laughs> the riches. So today it's Valentine's Day. It's a day for us to take the hearts that God gives us and to give them back to Him. It's a day to say, God, thank you for all your blessings in my life. Thank you for your Lord Jesus, your son, Larry. Shall we pray? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your never-ending love for us. We're so thankful that, that you looked down on this world and you saw this world in all of its brokenness. You saw us in all of our brokenness. You saw us, these people that by our rights should be unlovable and you loved us us. So thank you, Lord, for allowing us to call upon your name, to receive the salvation you've granted for us. Thank you, Lord, that you walk with us every day to fend off the temptations of the devil and that you forgive us when we fall. Thank you, Lord, that we can come here this day and gather together as the people of God in a time of worship to let you know, Lord, how much we love you. Be with us, Lord Jesus, not just on this day, but on every day in remembrance of you and your love in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we continue now with the prayers of the church.